Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Happy Sunday. I am consuming a little bit of a caffeinated beverage, just waking up, trying to regain my thoughts, trying to awaken, if you will. And I am not the only one person that is being awakened or the one thing that is being awakened here on this Sunday. The Force has been awakened. I'm talking about Episode 7, the movie that came out over the weekend, the very highly anticipated, highly hyped, and very exciting new film by J.J. Abrams. Basically, the sequel to Return of the Jedi, which people like me who are huge fans of the original trilogy were looking forward to and are looking forward to. In fact, I say that are looking forward to is because, not because you're a pirate, but because you might not have seen the movie yet. So I am going to try to keep this vlog this review of The Force Awakens, episode seven that I saw yesterday afternoon. I'm going to try to keep it relatively spoiler free. What I mean by spoiler free is I will not give any major plot hole loops, plot twists and turns. I will not give any major pinpointed plot spoilers out. However, you probably will hear little things in this vlog that you probably did not know about the movie. Little things, because that is unavoidable when someone expresses their opinion. You're going to feel my emotions. You're going to feel me talk about certain characters, even though those characters might not have actually went on to do certain things in the movie that really twist the plot around. You will learn things. Let's call that not, let's call this the non-spoiler free Adam the Woo take review, if you will on episode seven. It's my second channel, Daily Vlog Channel. It's the Daily Woo. If you do not want to hear anything about the movie, then you're watching the wrong vlog. You should probably turn this vlog off now. Wait till you see the movie, then come back and see if my opinions kind of gel with your opinions, or if you're completely opposed to what I am thinking. I am just one man. I am not a director. I do not make feature film movies. I do not even know how to go about putting a movie together in that facet. So these are all my opinions. What I am saying is not by any stretch of the imagination the law or the opinion of what you might have. This is just how I feel as an old school 80s child, Star Wars in 77, then Empire Strikes Back, and then the culmination of my favorite trilogy, the Star Wars trilogy. Back to the Future, I'm a huge fan of it, mostly Back to the Future 1. The trilogy, I think the best, the best trilogy is the original Star Wars trilogy, in my opinion, followed by Back to the Future. My favorite Star Wars movies, in case you were asking, Empire Strikes Back, number one, Return of the Jedi, and then the very first episode, which is now called A New Hope, which back when originally when it came out on VHS, and I originally saw it, it was not called A New Hope, it was just called Star Wars. I actually have the original VHS series put out by Fox, not the television show Fox, but the VHS company Fox put out the Fox video cassettes. I still have that box set. So for me, that is what Star Wars is all about. The old school, 80s, child in me. And that was what I was hoping for with this new film. Now let me also start off by saying, J.J. Abrams did an amazing job on this film. This film does not by any stretch of the imagination suck, if you will. This movie is actually really well done, really well made, and pretty freaking awesome. Now that I have said that, I will now tell you that I actually did not really like the film. I left the theater very sad, not because of the events that happened in the movie, but just because I felt it did not live up to what my expectations were. Now, maybe that is my own fault. It probably is my own fault. And like I was saying, for a movie that came out that came out 22 years after its predecessor, now the prequels I do not count as part of the Star Wars legacy. In fact, here's an interesting thing too. A lot of people are probably going to conflict with my opinion on this review of this new movie, the episode seven. But when the very first prequel came out, I went to the movie theater to see it, was very disappointed, told all my friends who were also Star Wars fans what my opinion was, and they all contradicted me. They said, no, man, the movie was great, it was great, it was great. We as Star Wars fans, we like to hold everything 
Star Wars at such a high pinnacle that we will not accept that something is mediocre or lackluster. But over time, most of the population, the consensus of the Star Wars fandom, kind of side with my original opinion about the prequels not being that good. In fact, I have not actually seen the second prequel or the third prequel all the way through. I refuse to really watch them. I have seen them at people's houses, them watching it, watching bits and bits and pieces of it, and it really was not my cup of tea, my forte. So I never got into the prequels. So for me, Star Wars, and what I in my mind envision Star Wars to be, and in my heart especially, are those prequels. Not prequels, the original three, the original three not the prequels. So let's go on to my review of what the movie was about. Started off very strong, very good introduction of new characters. I had high hopes at the beginning of the movie. And I really started to... A few things I disliked about the film. The dark side, the evil villain, was so ominous and so powerful and way more evil. Now, keep in mind, I have not really focused on the prequels. I am going off the original three. This villain, this dark side presence that is on the screen was so evil and he created, killed so many people, so much carnage that it was almost disheartening to the point where this guy is trying to make Vader, Darth Vader, look like a has-been or a nobody. He is trying to one-up Vader by just killing everyone. And a lot of things when you watch the movie you will see how much destruction, how much death that this one character leads, leads this army, this new army of the dark side. So that was a little bit, you know, un understandable. You know, time goes on, things progress, evil gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. But then amongst all of this, some of the good guys that are in some of these scenes, some of the dialogue that was conflicted between the good guy, quote unquote, good guys, the light side, and this menacing dark side creature, you know, the, the main figurehead, was kind of comical, almost like, almost like it didn't really fit in. I know in the original Han Solo, you know, very sarcastic, but he had a very sarcastic, serious tone to his comedy. Some of the jokes in the heat of battle, back and forth, were almost like a little too comical for my taste. And that's when I knew, like, okay, we're taking a different turn to the Star Wars universe here. And that was fine things progressed and progressed. And I will say this also, that J.J. Abrams did a heck of a job with keeping things old school. The way it is filmed, the shots, the actual models they used, instead of using 100% CGI, I give J.J. Abrams a huge thumb, thumbs up for that. However, there were a few creatures in the movie that looked like the creatures in the prequels or in the original trilogy when they did the enhanced version, when George Lucas put all that CGI in. There were a few creatures in that that were main characters that were kind of hard to watch. They were too cartoony. And I thought, if you're going to go that far with actually putting in legitimate models, having real people in masks and costumes, then why throw in a couple of characters that are almost main characters that are CGI and are very hard for me in my 80s mentality to actually watch. Now, some people will probably not even notice that they are actually CGI. It'll all kind of just seem to get It's all a fantasy movie. I get it. But for me, like I said, personally for me, those things were very, very, very hard for me to kind of cope with and kind of deal with. And also, remember in the trailer when Han Solo is standing next to Chewbacca and he says, Chewie, we're home. That was the pinnacle of the trailer. That was the, that was the thing that everyone stood up and cheered for and belted out a joyous, happy, exciting, heck yes, Star Wars is back, including me. But when you watch that scene in the movie, at least for me, I actually realized that that, that piece of dialogue was put in there for one specific reason, and that was to make the trailer for... The Force Awakens, Episode 7, more powerful. It seems like that line that Han Solo, Harrison Ford's character, next to Chewbacca, delivered. When you see what I am talking about and they deliver that line, it doesn't make any sense on why he said it in that facet. And I think they originally wrote that specifically that way the trailer would have more impact to hook more people in. And it hooked me in. You got me on that one. So 
When those two things, the weird CGI, the kind of jokey things that were happening that were a little bit different than the original humor of the original, there's an alarm going off. Someone, someone, if you're thumbing this down, which I know it's going to get a lot of thumbs down because not everyone's going to agree with my opinion. When you thumbs this down, you're going to hear, (laughs) you're going to hear a bell ring. Every time a bell rings, someone thumbs a video down. You can thumbs this down if you disagree with me or you can thumbs it up if you agree with my opinion. Like I said, what I am sharing with you really does not have anything to do with the general consensus that the population has. It's just my opinion, my YouTube channel, my thoughts. I just wanted to share my thoughts on this. Some other things that left me feeling flat. The soundtrack to the movie, the original score, really I did not think had the oomph that it needed. There were a lot of throwbacks to the original. There were a lot of music cues from the original trilogy, which also got the heart pumping. But as far as a new original score, I think it really did not escalate to the powerhouse that it could have had. It did not have a great original score. Let's talk about the bad guy. Let's talk about this villain, this ominous creature that was so amazingly powerful. In the beginning, he's very amazingly powerful, and not even halfway through the movie, this villain reveals his real self. Half of the rest of the movie, he has his mask off. And I thought to myself, why in the heck is this guy, who basically is about 30 years old, leading this entire empire? Why does he have such a strong, why does he have such strong powers at such a young age? And why is he even wearing this mask? Darth Vader was an older man, had the mask on because he needed it basically to breathe. When he took the mask off at the end of Return of the Jedi, Luke even says, if I take the mask off, you will die. Darth Vader was converted from the dark side back to the light and did not care if he was actually going to die. And we ended on that high note. This movie, completely different. The menacing character takes his mask off at will. It's basically just like it's Halloween for him. He's running around with a Halloween mask on. Just did not really understand the point of that. And then It's almost like once he started frivolously taking this mask off to show his handsome young self with flowing hair. It's funny, too, because he takes his mask off and his hair is like in pristine condition. It's not all, he doesn't have hat hair at all. So that was kind of bothersome to me as well. And then, near the end of the film, this, you obviously know the female lead in in, in the trailer is going to be basically a big integral part of the movie just by watching the trailer. She ends up fighting this ominous character at some point, and you realize that this beast of a man at the beginning, this evil dark side beast, really is not as powerful as he put on to be, which is also kind of discouraging. Is he powerful? Is he not powerful? Kind of a weak, a weak character, in my opinion, for the Darth, quote unquote, Darth Vader S. I gotta go with side, I gotta go with Team Vader on this one. So, those are some things I really did not like about the movie. And without giving any major, major spoilers, the biggest disheartening part as I left the theater was the fact that my Star Wars hero, the savior of Star Wars, the quote unquote, I use that a lot in this vlog, the New Hope if you will, the one we all have rooted for, for generations, did not really serve a whole heck of a lot of a purpose in this film. And that, I think, really was the icing on the cake, really bummed me out, and really, really makes me kind of think in my mind and my heart that I am not going to really be excited about the future of the new Star Wars. Now, a lot of people will be. I'm, an, I'm turning into an old man here. I am from an older generation of Star Wars, and I know the new movie. It was fantastically made. There are some clever plot twists in it. People are going to love it. But for me, it kind of ended like almost with a, like a, not really a punch to the face or a kick to the nether regions, but I kind of felt that... Me, as a fan of the original trilogy and and the new hope, the one person who was supposed to save us really did not do what he was supposed to do. And that is very discouraging in my mind. Now I know 
people are not going to agree with me, but I just wanted to share that I personally, I love the way the film was made. It was, it was awesome the way this, everything was put together. But in my heart, I cannot safely say that I loved the movie on a personal level. I did not like it on a personal level. On a filmmaking level, for putting a sequel out, a sequel to Return of the Jedi, if you will, it's almost 30 years after the original ended in the timeline of Star Wars, J.J. Abrams and the whole crew did a heck of a job, a huge thumbs up to J.J. Abrams for what he put out there. But I just do not know if me, the new school Star Wars, is meant for me. It is not tarnished, it is not polished to be presented towards me. There were a lot of throwbacks, I got a lot of smiles, there were a lot of highs in this movie, and there were a lot of lows in this movie. I would like to know your opinion. Now, I will also say, even though I am not giving any major spoilers, obviously there are things I said that you probably did not realize, but I did not give you any of the major, there are major plot twists in this movie. I did not give you any of those. If you read the comments, if you read the comments and leave comments down below, you must realize that people will give spoilers. People will be probably communicating under this video, and you will probably read things that you did not want to know. So if you want to stay spoiler free, hopefully you did not watch this video as at the beginning I actually said. Do not watch this if you want to stay 100%. I purposely did not give the plot twists out, but do not read the comments down below. After you see the movie, feel free to commiserate down below and I will chime in with what my thoughts are and your thoughts. I want to see if I am alone in this thought process or if I am if I am in a group of other Star Wars fans who actually have the same belief. Now here's what I would like to do as well. I would like to see the movie again. This is my first thought. I would like to see the film again with some friends who are Star Wars fans who have seen the movie once. That way we're not going in blindly and we can actually kind of discuss the movie, maybe sit in the back of the movie theater, the top row, and discuss things as we go, what we liked, what we did not like. So for me, this movie was far more superior than the prequels. This may, the prequels make this movie look like the most epic movie of all time. Based on the original trilogy, this movie falls a little bit flat for me. So that's my review. Thanks for watching. Please be kind in the comments and in the thumbs up and the thumbs down. Remember, this is just one guy's opinion. I still love Star Wars. I just not, do not know if the new Star Wars is tailor-fitted and tailor-made for me. All right, I'll see you guys later. Love you guys. Goodbye.